today I'd like to talk to you about your associations. It's very important who we associate with, who we spend our time, who we give our interest, who we share our thoughts, and who we link up in terms of like values, morals, and character. So thinking about those things in a very serious manner so early in the morning, I know it can be a little challenging, or you may be listening to this in the evening, and it might be uh, a little more uh, easy to relate to what occurred today in your uh, schedule and how you might have applied the information I'm going to share with you and have the opportunity, of course, to use this information in your future for greater change and for good success. So now, who are you associating with? Who are you spending time with? Are the individuals that mirror your values, that are like in character as you are, that you can trust even when you cannot see them? You're confident that they are walking the walk and talking the talk as it relates to your conversations and your uh, shared time together when you're interacting and that they're the same person then as they are when they are with you. That's very, very important. We have seen so much deception in America, but not just in our nation, throughout the world. As we look at this deception, sometimes it can make us calloused. Sometimes it can make us discouraged. Sometimes it can even hold us back if we allow it to. But today I want to talk to you about two biblical characters who saw something that their fellow comrades did not see or their fellow spies did not see. There was a time in the history of Israel when Moses sent out 12 spies to spy out a particular area of land that he believed God had given to the Jewish people and he wanted to see how that land was doing. And so he chose one person, one male, from each of the tribes of Israel. So there were 12 spies. Now, included in those 12 spies were Caleb and Joshua. And at the end of that particular expedition, when the spies returned to Moses to give him a report, they began by saying, well, everything looks good, the land is fertile, and uh, of course there are giants in the land, and <clears throat> their story goes down from there, except for two of the spies, and that was Joshua and Caleb. And what they saw in the land were all the same things that the other ten spies saw, but they saw opportunity. And the opportunity that they saw came from a review of how God had led them in the past and how he be they believed that God would has, had led them to the point where they were and that God was leading them forward. And to go forward always requires courage. So when they spoke with Moses, they of course explained that, you know, yes, there are giants in the land, but our God is well able. Our God is well able to help us. That is our land. It is something that we were promised, and we must take it back, no matter how many giants are there. You know, when it comes to your future, your career, using your talents and your skills, fulfilling your dreams, there is a territory that has been given you. Because in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, there is a scripture there that says that God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. Well, plans always include people and places and time and locations and uh, interactions and um, challenges and results and, and uh, advances and so on and so forth. So if... God has a plan for your life, it means that you will be moving forward just as the spies were moving. But if you do not see it, the plan for your life, the opportunity for your life, 
as Caleb and Joshua saw the land as an opportunity for Israel to advance into the promises that God had made to them concerning the territory, then you will miss the greatest, most exciting experience and journey known to you. Because it's the plan that God wrote for you. But again, it will require you to remember that he included in that scripture, he says, my plan for you is good. And I believe one of the reasons that God wrote that in the scripture, Jeremiah chapter 29, is because he wanted you to know that sometimes it's not going to feel good. Sometimes it's not going to feel good when a door closes in your life, such as unemployment, such as a divorce, such as not being accepted in a particular university, such as a loss. Those things do not feel good. But if the scripture is truly truth, and truth that you can put your life on the line for, then you can be assured that there is coming a time that this is going to work for your good because the plan for your life is good. It is not a plan to harm you, but a plan to prosper you, to advance you, to fulfill you, to give you what it is that enriches you and makes you even more valuable to serving God in his kingdom and also in serving wherever you're employed or in your family or in your volunteer work. So the most important thing that we can remember here is that our association foremost with God is the most important association we can have. You see, Caleb and Joshua had a close association with Moses because after all, he did choose him as one of the top 12 to go out and spy the land. I'm, but instead, they had something written in their heart and they stood on it and they reported accordingly. And what they stood on was, my God is greater than any giant in the land, than any challenge in the marketplace. So I hope today, as you're listening to this presentation, that you will ask yourself, who am I associating with? Is my foremost association with my creator? Is my next level of association with leadership that have the same values and the character that I believe is significant and important for good leadership? And then the next level will be those of which you operate with, that you work with, that you interact with on a daily and a regular basis. And that would be your co-workers, your family members, your neighbors, your volunteer workers that you're a part of. <clears throat> so that's important, your associations. You see, Caleb and Joshua did not falter. The other 10 spies faltered in the plan that God had for their life. For instance, they never received the blessings that Caleb and Joshua received. Why? Because they did not believe. They did not believe in the fact that their creator was greater. If he gave you the land, then he gave you the land. Stand on it. If he says he has a good plan for your life, then stand on it. If he encourages you through your thoughts and through your prayers and through your other associations to move forward or if he calls you out and assigns you to a particular assignment in the marketplace, go for it. But remember, you're not going alone. He's already there. He's already been there. He's still there. And he wants you to know he's there. God is good. God is great. He is for you. He is not against you. His plan for your life is good. We must live by that, and we must teach our children that. If our children do not know that there's actually a road map that God has for their destiny, then they will lose time. They will falter. They'll be all over the place. They'll be trying out this religion and that religion and 
this ideology and that ideology without having the foundational ideology of God Almighty, the creator of the universe. It's so important that they see our association foremost as Joshua and Caleb saw Moses' association with God. Moses was not perfect. There is no parent that is perfect either. So our associations will not be perfect because there's only one perfect, and that is God Almighty. But through our love for him and his mercy and grace to us, every day we get up with a fresh start. And that association and relationship with God brings us into the marketplace where we find favor, where we see great things, where we report great things, and where we expect great things. And so today, remember, you are blessed. Your associations are so important. But most importantly, you are loved by a God who says you cannot fail because all things are working together for your good because he has a plan to prosper you, to bless you, and to keep you. This is Eunice Phelps from Orlando, Florida. May this be a wonderful day for you. May you discover new things in the marketplace, just as Joshua and Caleb did. And may your report be a good report.